I'm really excited to be here, and uh, I must say I was thrown off of my script because so many great inputs that I got here. First of all, which were the talks that you all gave standing ovations? Probably the talks of the patients. The patients that shared their stories, the patients that told you what really matters in their lives. And some sentences that res resounded me uh, still, and I needed to repeat them here, is one was, don't ask me what's the matter, ask me what matters. I think that was Erin who said that. Another was, patients are seeking answers for personal questions. It is about their life, it's about their personal reality. And that is something that we in this partnership want to facilitate. Uh, I'm a developmental pediatrician and I go by Dr. Olaf because that is patient-centered. My little patients love Olaf and that's good for me from the film Frozen. I'm also uh, fortunate to work at a center at McMaster University that is the place where evidence-based medicine was born, where problem-based learning was born, and I work at the Kenshide Center for Childhood Disability Research, which is known to including parents and patients in their research for over 20 years already. And obviously, we think we are very family-centered, patient-centered, and actually, I prefer to say person-centered. It includes everyone. But I think we still fall short, and that's why. I'm not the only one that sees uh, the patients. I have a look at development, at behaviors. Other colleagues look at motor skills or speech or mental health. And then there are colleagues in the community at the schools for community activities that also provide services for these families and, and their children. And for patients, it is like each of us very patient-centered, but each of us on our own island and they have to island hop from one to the other, sharing their story, repeating the story over and over, and more importantly, trying to figure out what topics of their life that matters to them can be brought up with which professional and which goals are important here and important there. And that gets frustrating. What's the reason for that? We heard that this morning at the talk about hierarchies and about medical education. We are living in a system that was created 100 years ago based on acute care. It's called the biomedical model. This model tries to solve problems and does that very well for acute care by isolating and separating them. That's why we are so many specialists and subspecialists and sub-subspecialists. But it's not a model made to take care of chronic and complex health problems that affect everyday lives over the lifespan of a patient. A model that can do that is the biopsychosocial and spiritual model. Some of you might have heard of that, probably Louise, who is an OT uh, by training. That is a model that was adapted by the World Health Organization to develop a classification that allows to better describe what really matters in the health of people. As you can see, it is bidirectional, and involves body structures, functions, that are all these things that we can measure with wearables and uh, fancy tests. And these provide us the data that actually are easy to capture. What is difficult to capture is all the rest. Which environment are you living? What do you like to do? What are the barriers that you're encountering? What are the supports you have? That is extremely important when we need to make decisions about treatment plans, when we need to uh, uh, develop goals with the patients together to really address what is important for them. So <clears throat> we try in our solution to facilitate the implementation of biopsychosocial and spiritual approach in medicine. That's a moonshoot goal. And we hope that with our development, that will be facilitated. The second part of that is that we <coughs> want to uh, facilitate for patients to be able to use that classification system, which is a system with codes in the background, with descriptors, with, with text, so that they can use their natural language, describe what matters to them, describe how they are doing, and the system will translate that into ICF codes, which are official standardized codes available in uh, if different languages around the world. 
to then help them develop their unique personal functional profile. The next step would then be to analyze these profiles and feed back to patients information about their functional profile and how they might relate to other patients, maybe even with different diagnoses, but that are very similar to them with regards to their functional profile. And that will help us to understand better where research needs to move, what is the health experience that people have, and what policies are important to implement to improve health for a population. So the idea is to share this data with researchers and policymakers. Imagine, patients will be able to contribute what really matters to their life into their own and owned patient health chart. Professionals will be able to collaborate and communicate around the goals that matter to the patient and be connected wherever they are working. And researchers have new insights that we didn't have up to now about what matters in health and how people are experiencing health and what barriers they are encountering. And we are well on our way. We have nearly 300 collaborators across the world. We don't have money, a little bit, but we have very many very dedicated people from 39 countries. And <clears throat> we are working together on our first prototype that we got financed from the Finnish government that's being developed and will be available uh, at the end of uh, this month or next month. You never know with software, right? And then we look for opportunities to test this and field test and uh, collaborate with others in different countries uh, around the world. So please, if you're interested, speak to me, follow us, look us up. We are available. Thank you very much for your interest and attention. Thank you. Thanks, Olaf. I'm going to ask you some questions. So, how um, how do we practically get involved? So, I mean, you know, we can chat to you here, but um, for those who are watching at home, is there a website we can go to? And and who are you looking for? Individuals? Are you looking for organisations? Do you need some money? No, you don't need money. Okay. Of course, <laughs> we need money. <laughs> a couple of millions would be good. Is that all? Right? Uh, but uh, so to get engaged, uh, we are like we're looking for any type of. Uh, person that is interested with that idea that shares that vision and that obviously uh, are patients that are caregivers but are also designers technical people healthcare professionals and organizations governments health organizations and so on that think that this is an important idea and want to support that right and if I want to get involved as a patient and I go to your website and find out some information and I talk to my doctors about it and they're like uh, I don't know is there still an opportunity for an individual to get involved yes yes yeah, yeah. you can get involved as an individual and then uh, we have that so the idea is we are collaborative we have people in different countries around the world that, uh, for example, in Finland now, we are collaborating with two uh, patient organizations and an university that develops the technical part and patient representatives uh, are co-creating that application in that, uh, in that environment. Uh, what they produce will be shared with the others in the collaborative so that we can move on and develop it further and hand it over to whoever is able to do something or get some money for it to further develop it. That's yeah. a, it's a longer process. And how do you go about the analysis of the data? So the analysis of I mean, the like data... Like you said, it comes from silos where yeah. different standards are used, there's free text, you know, it's, yeah. let's face it, medical information is a mess. So, so how we, are you going to do the classification? So in the, um, in the project in Finland, we developed uh, a sub, sub software called Function Mapper. That is a software that has the ICF codes, has the ICF official text, and then has ICF latex. So that latex uh, is uh, text that uh, we imagine and patients imagine is more easily understandable than the official definition of a code. Mm -hmm. And over time, they will also be able to introduce their own free text. If it's not found and not e being coded, then that will be added on manually through the network of people that, that work on that. Okay, and great. eventually that is a side project trying to use uh, artificial intelligence to uh, analyze uh, health data that has been coded to ICF and teach the software to, to do that. That's a, that's a side idea. But 
that well, could be possible as well. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's an important one. Yeah. And actually, I'll put you in contact with a guy I know in Australia who's uh, one of the leading experts in Thank NLP. Thank you. Like Excellent. To, yeah. um, not the how to like manipulate people. Yeah. <laughs> the other one, which no, is how do yeah. you understand, how does a computer yeah. understand free yeah. text? So Excellent. Yeah, remind yeah. me, I'll put you in yeah. touch with him. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us on the Ignite stage and well job well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.